Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I know we have a few stragglers since people are coming in from lunch, uh, but I'd like to try and keep this on target and, and kick this off. Uh, my name is Jennifer Latorja. I'm with Crypto Oracle. We are a community first VC and strategic advisory based in New York. This panel is especially uh, interesting for me because community is the reason behind everything we do at Crypto Oracle. I've also led ecosystem development teams at several developer focused tech startups over the past few years. And I'd love to hear from these panelists, their experiences in building out a community, mobilizing them and learning from them. Uh, so the first topic I kind of want to talk about is probably the most basic question, but it's actually the hardest to execute. So I'll, I'll start off, um, actually, before we get into questions, maybe we'll start with intros, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll just go down the line. Maybe you can introduce yourself, uh, what you do, and uh, why you do it. Hey, everybody. My name is Kyle Arm from Hadera Hashgraph. I'm the director of technical partnerships there now, but the first six months of the company uh, was very instrumental in building the community uh, and all of our social outlets. Uh, so happy to, you know, we, we have Hashgraph algorithm, which is extremely fast, fair, secure, has the highest, greatest security, and then we're implementing that Hashgraph algorithm into Hadera, which is addressing two of the big problems in the public ledger space, which are stability and governance. So. Hi, everyone. My name is Heidi Kupari. I'm the CEO of Anastasia Impact, which is a financial firm that helps women and millennials and their families align their wealth with their mission, passion, and purpose in the world across all asset classes. And I'm also the CEO of Dream Tank, which exists because I believe that the world's biggest innovators with the best imaginations in the world are not being heard in all of these conversations we have about the new economy. So it's a think tank and social entrepreneurship accelerator for kids and teens. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Jill Richman. Um, I'm the co-founder of an organization called Data, which is the Digital Asset Trade Association. Um, so we were born, essentially we were born out of supporting Wyoming pass uh, a lot of the most crypto friendly and blockchain friendly legislation. Uh, and as such, our mandate is really to support states and uh, support our members or member constituents uh, on a federal level lobby. And our primary focus right now is still in creating uh, and supporting a number of states in passing some, some critical legislation. Um, and we're about to issue uh, a legislative scorecard in the next few days, so keep an eye on that. Um, it'll be a, a handy scorecard that you can look at in terms of where you decide to vote this year um, in, and, and governor's races. There you go. Yeah, well, uh, so, uh, you know, I want to start with Heidi, actually. Um, when we talk about building a community, everyone thinks it's very easy to do, but it's actually very challenging to execute. And if you're a company that's also starting out that has limited resources, limited funding, you don't actually have the ability to hire a team to manage your social media channels. You don't have the ability to hire a PR team. So what, how do you actually go about building a community? When do you think the right time is to start and, and what recommended methods do you actually have to start creating an ecosystem around you? Well, to me, uh, community is about people that have a shared mission or a shared geography, right? So about when, how do you find people that have a shared mission? Well, you find your mission as a founder. You know, even if you have no money, you have your mission and your reason for being and why you care about this so much. And if you share that with, a, you create a small ecosystem around you of people who feel that deeply about your mission too. So it's not just like, please come and help me. It's help me because you are also going to be served in your mission, your passion, your purpose by being a part of my mission. So it's deep, it's very deep. And so when people are moved and they feel something, they do something. So then you have this whole group of influencers around you that are on a mission with you. And they can share and then it can radiate from there and that will help attract time. They will all be so passionate about what you're doing and your reason for being. They will help you with time, money, and talent, which you need. You don't just need money. 
You need talent, you need distribution, you need everything that this group of people have to bring you. They each have a whole universe to bring to you if they're motivated and excited about what you're doing. So my recommendation is you don't need money to know who you are and what your authentic expression is. And you can find other people who are going to share this with you. Thanks. I, I see you nodding your head over there, Kyle. I know you said back in the day you did some growth hacking stuff. So do you have any recommendations on how you also go about starting a community uh, in the most cost efficient way possible? I know you also have uh, you know, a developer background. You're a developer as well um, and kind of made the shift to coming into the community side. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I think you know, passion is certainly the thing that everyone will resonate with. Uh, so that's that's a key piece, uh, being able to, um, sorry, uh, be able to truly put yourself out there. I mean, I think about artists and music and their ability to be to put themselves out there, and people resonate with that, and that builds a community, right? But when you're at the very beginning stages, you need to be frugal in some sort of way. So there's a lot of things like, of course, like Hootsuite is a great platform that allows you to kind of build all these things in and I mean there's there's others like Mass Planner is a very interesting uh, a program that I've used many times to um, help me to schedule posts across many social medias and stay really organized with things um, but I think also it's a bit of uh, embracing chaos um, and really like throwing paint at the wall and seeing what sticks because um, Ultimately, you're going to find one kind of area where that is really successful, and you need to be able to figure that out as fast as possible, and then kind of focus on on that stream. So that's what I would say. And and so you actually raise an interesting point because it's actually about listening to your community. So as you start building out your community, you know they can actually be influential in how you build your product or your service out. So if you look at traditional developer-focused tech companies like Atelier or SendGrid, they're very well known in the, in the developer space because they have dev relations teams to sit side by side with developers at hackathons to understand who these personas are, how these personas are potentially using the product, and that ultimately influences the product team and how it's a, it's a feedback loop. So can, can you guys talk a little bit about how then you're listening to your community, evolving from that, and using that information to influence how you're building out your product? Yeah, so, well, it, it's, uh, it's kind of like design thinking or, you know, human-centered design in, in that what, what we do with Dream Tank, for example, is we call youth-centered design because there's a lot of people, I know this may go without saying, but there's a lot of people innovating things without having been in the shoes of the people who they're innovating for. Um, and so when it comes to anything to ignite people, we need to get to the core of who we're working with. And I think about people in the developing world. So for example, um, I'll just give an example around the kids' innovation and Dream Tank and why blockchain and community is so important for this purpose, is getting down to the granular detail of the people that are ultimately going to be empowered with this technology first. Um, and so uh, there's a story in, um, in a region in Zambia of a little girl who was 11 years old. Her name is Melindy. And she, uh, one of our advisors and partners was working with her on, you know, they're working on digital identity um, so that they don't get trafficked. And she ended up getting tricked and swiped and never heard of, heard from again. And so when we think about with Dream Tank, our goal is to empower kids in the most remote places all around the world to actually be able to change their communities. But before they do that, they need to feel safe. So digital identity should be like one of the number one things that a lot of us want to make happen so that we can create the impact. So with Melindy in mind, and then with kids in mind who want to innovate, we created a whole product and then bring our whole community around it to listen to them. And, uh, and then scale from there. But again, I think it goes to the core. It's like you ask questions. What did you like? What didn't you like? Reiterate. 
the, the days of trying to package everything behind a wall and then launch it and think it's going to be perfect for everyone are kind of over. So I, you know, kind of using agile software mindset around like testing, refining, testing, refining. That's what I think the most successful companies in the space are going to do because we all are really still experimenting, many of us. So just embrace that. So uh, this is a question for Jill. Um, your organization is focused on federal lobbying for blockchain and crypto acceptance. So h how do you actually go about keeping that momentum and keeping your constituents engaged and communicating across those various channels? Yeah, so no, <clears throat> I think we've, um, I still want to say Wyoming's a really good example of how we've, we've operated. and. To the extent that what Wyoming did, it, 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 established, it allowed us to start working with the companies that were very interested in either setting up shop in Wyoming or wanted to understand how the legislation was going to impact them. And we empowered them to testify. We empowered them to basically you know, really understand how any of the legislation would impact them and communicate with legislators themselves. So we acted as a bridge to the extent possible and continue to act as a bridge in doing so and taking those processes over to Colorado, for instance, where we were working on passing legislation as well and supported the entire community in testifying and giving them talking points and understanding how they really could communicate with legislators and how, and how to sort of get what they needed, essentially in creating citizen, citizens who are interested and are very much engaged. But more importantly, what Wyoming has done is it's built, it's continued to build an ecosystem for those companies that are there. Right, so they had a hackathon. They were, you know, there were a number of of projects that were put in place to support all of the devel the developer communities and the companies that might, in fact, be setting up shop there. And so, to the extent that you create those cycles of like this is an ecosystem and this is how you communicate with your legislator, we're there to support those companies and those legislators throughout that entire process. That's fantastic. Um, so this is pro just a, a general question for the panel that we have here. I, you know, a lot of companies tend to have difficulty understanding the unique characteristics of the makeup of their network, and they tend to care about a lot, a lot about vanity metrics. So how large their Telegram group is, how many Twitter followers they have, um, is that actually important to to have those large numbers? if you don't actually understand what's driving your community. And alternatively, if, if you do understand what is driving your community, then how do you actually end up monetizing off of that? How do you, how do you take that at, to your advantage in a positive way, if at all? I mean, I can, I can certainly comment a little bit on that. I mean, when I think about what our community is, like we kind of have like the enterprise push and then we kind of have a developer push and we don't have a product out yet so monetizing things is a little difficult but um, I think uh, by addressing those two different things and kind of comment on the last question too is um, like when uh, um, so as as we're building these communities, uh, the way we've built our governance model is that you know the enterprises are kind of have these 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 big channels, right? We kind of like look where the next million users are going to come, and a lot of the times it's like when the enterprises get on board. Um, so so with that, like they're kind of being able, we're able to leverage all of these enterprises and be able to see a much bigger market from them, and we have like community funneling through this kind of uh, working groups associated groups and then our council members that are overseeing the, the, the governing like governing the actual public ledgers so um, I think through that uh, the you know Lehman has a vision for the next I mean when he made this discovery it was so profound I mean he knows exactly what he's doing for the next three to five years probably um, after that you know we're of course being cognizant and aware of what people are, are saying and and in the telegram and discord and all these things are, are kind of instrumental to us you know keeping in co close contact with everyone and doing meetups and hackathons and like just being on the ground as much as we can to to stay close to those that are you know really close to us and are doing good things in the space so okay so i'm going to take a line from the waz this morning who is here for that <laughs> How awesome was that? Uh, I loved it. Uh, and so, although I'm in 
finance world, and this is not a traditional thing that I would say in the finance world, especially when I'm working on you know helping people get profits with impact across all asset classes. That being said, since we're creating this whole new ecosystem and we do need to figure out ways to monetize it, but right now it's still really a sandbox. And if we take the mindset of, I just want, like the was said, I didn't do this for money. I did this because I wanted to make an awesome machine that changed people's lives, you know? And so what if we were to just take the mindset of, I'm, we're going to make it's so awesome to be part of our community. We're going to reward everyone who does everything. We're going to incentivize collaboration. And our goal is to get people to engage with their money and be empowered with their money. Because if, like, I don't know if many of you know this, but there's a $70 trillion wealth transfer going to women and millennials. Uh, and... Women and millennials, if are traditionally not necessarily in the traditional financial world, in engaging as much with their money, and statistically are looking for things that help people on the planet or are very disruptive. So they want to do things with their alternatives asset class that are non-correlated to the market, that are groundbreaking, that are completely like well, when I was at UBS, for example, we we actually lost millennial clients because we weren't doing anything innovative enough in the private investing space. And that's why I'm in blockchain, because this is an opportunity we have to create a new system while we're transforming the money in the existing system. Like ESG, which stands for Environmental Social Governance. If every Every, all the money you have in the public market is transformed, meaning aligned with what you care about, and you screen out everything you don't like, and you screen in what you'd want. And then with the alternatives asset class, you can experiment. So let's embrace this experiment and not need it to be everything that makes us money and put all of our eggs in one basket. I like diversification. And because within that container of I can play with this money and it doesn't matter what happens with it, radically experiment, radically collaborate. Don't focus on the monetizing. Focus on the value for the people and the money will come. Uh, so, so something that uh, I'm noticing a trend with all of you guys is, is you're really trying to make sure you're empowering your community, you're teaching your community, you're listening to them, you're educating them. Um, and that's ultimately what it is you're doing, Jill, is actually educating your community about how they can also advocate for blockchain acceptance. Um, and so I, I kind of want to ask Kyle this question, I guess, or it's actually open to all. I know Hashgraph has ambassadors, um, but a lot of times people don't actually know how to uh, adapt or adopt the product, even though it sounds fantastic and you know, a lot of times companies don't actually know how to implement it within their existing business or ecosystem. So how do you go about actually teaching people to then be able to feel comfortable enough to adopt it? Yeah, so I think that's a, that's a common problem across the industry right now. Um, we're certainly, you know, there's a lot of people creating POCs out there. I mean, many of our council, our prospective council members uh, are, are trying to figure out where to deploy, you know, a, a distributed ledger in their company. So, um, I mean, it's, a, it's an ever going uh, knowledge uh, kind of mission um, and, and being able to uh, pack this up and, and, and be able to teach it the most effectively you know, we can is, is always going to be a problem. I mean, as technology continues to get more and more advanced um, and more difficult to understand, uh, there, there's a big hole there for people to be able to break that down and explain things uh, in a more effective manner and to, to get more people involved. So, I'd like to be the contrarian. <laughs> so you said it's going to always be a problem as technology gets more and more sophisticated. Um, so my answer is to, there are a set of people in the world that are uniquely qualified to figure the, a lot of that stuff out, believe it or not. And it's kids who have been born into technology. They literally eat, sleep, and breathe this. And a lot of us are embracing these new technologies and we have to try to figure out how it fits into our framework of the system of how we operate. And we're trying to break out of that box. 
But kids don't have to do that. They literally think this way. So I say we bring kids on the boards and as advisors to all of these blockchain companies. And anytime you're experimenting with any new technology, um, bring them in and ask what they think and let them play with it. You'll be blown away. <laughs> No, I mean, Heidi's right. The only thing I'll say, I mean, just in our, <clears throat> I mean, we're in a unique space, right? So the, the uniqueness of it is how, how our organizational structure works, which is, by definition, the power is really built from the working groups. And the working groups are head up by our members. And our members are the ones who are telling us what their pains are and what their issues are, right? And, and that's, what sets the, that's what sets our legislative agenda. That's what sets our agenda across the board. That's, that sets our agenda up in terms of the states that we're working with and where we can get support. And so to the extent that we're more of a we're listening to those companies more than we're telling those companies what they need. And so that's the only thing that I'll say in terms of, a, you know, how, how we operate. So uh, this industry is moving so fast, you know, the way we communicate, respond, work, iterate. Um, there are, I feel like the way that we communicate is actually quite fragmented. We give snippets on Twitter. We have real-time conversation on Telegram. Our developers are on GitHub or Discord. We're doing tutorials on YouTube. How are you trying to make sure you have 360-degree communication? How do, you, how do you manage all that? So, you just, so how do you ensure you have 360 communication yeah, in your community? Yeah, just making sure that your message is consistent because your listeners are using different channels. And if you, even if you think about your personal life, the way people contact you, they all have their preferred method. So I, you know, people say, oh, I only do text, I only do Facebook Messenger, uh, talk to me on Telegram, I talk to my team on Slack. Mm -hmm. I, well, I think it's like, that's always the holy grail, isn't it? <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's a combination of different ways, like, I like that, you know, anything that's like kind of an aggregator or kind of an API that communicates with all channels um, is, is, I think we should be looking for something like that. Um, but around the influencer strategy, and there's one of my clients, um, so I advise some social impact blockchain companies, Native, um, is doing something really interesting where they're creating communities on their platform and, and enable communities to have voting and to get rewarded for tasks that they take on behalf of the organization. So I know a lot of, it's not just for cause-based companies, but a lot of cause-based companies are, and especially nonprofits, are used to asking people for things for free. Uh, and they really need to do a lot of work and spend a lot of money to engage people. Uh, and so I think that your question is, is accurate. Is that like, do you just keep hiring more and more people to like communicate with these more and more, you know, people part of your community? I think it's empowering the community to speak on your behalf. And so if you reward people for communicating these talking points on these channels, um, you can kind of ambassadorize your community to go be spokespeople and they feel like, and if they're passionate about it, then they get rewarded for it. So now you have a whole engaged community where you don't have to do it all yourself. So that's my thought. There's actually, I shouldn't even plug it because it's not, I have no, I'm not an advisor of no association, but there's a company called OmniSparks that actually is built and I've demoed their platform. It's really grounded in just aggregating all of those channels in a way that's really useful for someone who is managing all of those, the growth and community of those organizations. So I'm just going to drop that there. No, that's helpful. I mean, that uh, I also want to be cognizant of time, so maybe I only have a couple questions left. But uh, can you guys give examples then of companies that are doing community well? Any case studies? Or that you aspire to? <laughs> uh, there's this one, there's one um, that's a, a stable coin that's launching out of um, Denmark and uh, they are, uh, they're called Arise and uh, I'm just taking a look at them as potentially advising them um, and they're actually doing their pre-sale um, where they don't have 
more, they don't want more than $100,000 from any one person. So they actually have raised, so far, they've raised $500,000 from, I think, something like 3,000 people. Um, and so they're doing community really well because they're bringing their community on the fundraising journey with them. And I really like that model. So Arise, and it's A-R-Y-Z-E, I just think they're really interesting to take a look at this. And I'm also fascinated with the, st you know, the stable coin and the ability for them to pair with a lot of these other, you know, like we're doing for a dream tank and we're going to be having an AI that's kind of like a Yoda in your pocket um, for kids and then paired with a wallet so that they can be safe and then be innovate and create businesses in their communities and change their communities. So that's something that I really want to partner with uh, because they care about community. Um, and I think that that's one of the best examples that's the reason I know about them, because I was researching, and I met them at the United Nations um, this year, uh, who's doing, a, just in, in case a lot of you don't know, the Sustainable Development Goals. How does, does everyone in the room know about the Sustainable Development Goals? So, do you mind me sharing that, because it's part of this? We have maybe 30 seconds left, so you okay. have 10. <laughs> 10, okay. So we, almost every country on the planet agreed on these goals, 17 goals for humanity to achieve by 2030. And a lot of organizations and companies are organizing around it. And you should too. <laughs> so, so one final thought. Um, if we want to continue uplifting this nascent industry or emerging industry, what's the number one way that we can make a substantial difference? I, I say get the enterprises involved. This is like the most important thing, and uh, I, I think the platform that you know Hadera has built and the governance model that we have is uh, very interesting for a lot of them. So when we get these enterprises involved and get them to be thought leaders in the space and, and running a public ledger, um, I, I really think that's where we're going to see uh, mass adoption and and great uh, all of the great ideas that we've seen in this space actually come to fruition. So. Organize around the United Nations and sustainable development goals and have radical cross-sector collaboration, including enterprises, including all sectors, with everyone having a seat at the table for each sustainable development goal so we can achieve our moonshots. Yeah, I mean, I'll mix the last question and this one in the same, which is, he's not here, so I can't, I won't, I feel no problem plugging him, but I think what Fred Krueger is doing at EOS Links, um, yeah, no, he really, he, he gets, he gets consumer, he really gets consumer adoption, and so I would only say that that's, we should be looking at individuals who understand how to fix pain points for consumers, basically. Great, thank you very much. Let's give a round of applause for our panelists.